today we've got a very exciting 4-3-2-1 for you guys that scores quite a fair few goals and got very good results of all four teams tested, ranging from powerhouses to very weak teams, and also a shape like a Christmas tree, so that's always a bonus at this time of the year. Let's get into it. So guys, it is Josh from FM Scout today, and we've got another tactic created by Nap himself based around the shape of a Christmas tree. So we're getting in the spirit onto this channel, and obviously this is going to be the last tactic before Christmas Day. So hopefully you have a great Christmas and you enjoy the video so far this side of the year. Next year, it's going to be even better, so be sure to leave a like on the video and definitely subscribe as well. But let's see the results, and then, of course, break down the tactic. So we're going to do worst team to best team today. The first team is going to be 20th place predicted, Regalia in the Italian Serie B. Obviously quite a big, quite a big task to finish first in this league when you are predicted 20th but for us we're going to take it and actually we do go invincible now I will say when I say invincible we did pick up 13 draws as you can see here a lot of them actually being nil nils or one ones but we are literally predicted to finish rock bottom of the league so it was never going to be flawless although technically we are flawless a lot of draws is what I'm trying to say but still technically invincible and we scored quite a fair few goals 87 goals in the league conceded just 29 we did pick up a fair few bookends but that is probably down to poor discipline from the players not exactly the great attributes etc etc it's going to be Yanis and Steve coming in with 21 goals a 7.43 from Eduardo and also going to be Mario Samparisi I I'm going to butcher these names I do apologize Joint tied with 13 assists. I do apologise about butchering names. Definitely one of my weaknesses. But overall, a very good season with this team. I'm very surprised we got from 20th to first place, to be honest. But sometimes in FM, when you're playing as a slightly smaller team, if you've got a very attack and formation, you can catch a lot of the big boys off guard. So in this league, it would be like Spezia. Obviously, Pisa as well. Quite a good team. And we've clearly done that. Team stat-wise, we're going to dominate quite convincingly as we are going to pick up six of them going in our favour. The most points per game at 2.32. The most goals at 87 the most shots at 616, the fewer shots against at 281, the most dribbles made at 650. Possession-wise, I will show you, not going to have the most possession, especially with a team like this, but still above a 50% mark, and also pick it up the fewest conceded at 29. Data Hub wise is going to be very, very convincing. 2.29 goals per game. Conceded way under a goal a game at 0.76. Just over 16 shots on this occasion at 16.21. A 77.79 tackle win ratio. A little bit low potentially. Obviously, we did pick up a fair few bookends in this season. And a pass completion of 88.33. Next is going to be Union Berlin. Obviously, over in the Bundesliga, a team predicted to finish in 10th place. We, however, got in the top four. We're going to take that any day of the week. Gain, obviously, gain in Champions League football. Quite funny. Leonardo Bonucci, joint top goal scorer with Datro Fafana. Now, I know Nap has got some nutty set pieces. And Bonucci, I know he's old. He's going to get memes a lot. He can he can head a ball. And obviously, that's where quite a fair few of our goals did come from. Not only that, also our wingbacks were getting involved, which you've got to see as I explain that in the tactical breakdown. Robin Gossens coming in with a 7.49 highest average rating. Christopher Trimmel picking up the most assists. And Diego Lite coming in with a 92% pass completion. Now, over to the team stats. We are going to be looking at 86 goals scored, 37 goals conceded, ranking us to fifth best. Now, I'm going to accept not being the best defensively in this league because obviously there's many better teams that are going to defend better than us. The likes of Bayern, Dortmund, Leipzig, um, Bayer Leverkusen should be, but didn't really have a great season this year. Frankfurt also very defensively solid. So I'm not going to be too fast. And my main aim was to try and get inside of the top seven, the top six to gain some European football. But the fact we finished third and not many points behind second place, I'm going to take any day. Going over to the team stats, we're only going to feature in a couple of them. That is going to be the most goals coming in at 86, which is really impressive, actually. Quite a fair few more than Bayern Munich. And also having the most shots, again, quite a fair few more than Leipzig. Possession-wise, we're not even going to be on the page. So I would imagine that's worst case going to be under 50% or 50% mark which again I'm not going to be too upset about because it's definitely not a possession based tactic overall as long as we're in the top four I'm happy. Data Hub wise, it is going to be slightly more goals scored and a little bit more conceded to be expected, to be honest. We are in a harder league. Just over a goal conceded at 1.09, but we do make up for that by scoring over two and a half goals a game. Basically, a 79% tackle win ratio, an 86.55% pass completion, and just under by 0 0.3. Let's round it up. It's going to be Christmas. 15 shots per game. Up next is going to be third place predicted Atletico Madrid, and we've come out and actually won the treble. The Spanish Cup against Sevilla, the league against everyone 
one and also the Spanish Super Cup against FC Barcelona. So in second place, Real Madrid, quite close, six points. And then other than that, it's a big drop off. Barcelona not enjoying a great season. Same with Real Sociedad. To be fair, not actually a bad season for them, but Barcelona really not at the races. Madrid, they give us sort of a battle, but we got over the line. That's all that matters. Alvaro Morata. 23 goals, Sayuncu with a 7.69, and it is going to be the Madrid legend himself, Koke picking up 16 assists. In terms of the team stats, we are going to be the best team in the league when it comes to goals scored, picking up a very high 134, and only conceding 29 goals. So defensively, very solid. I guarantee Real Madrid is going to be rank one, but who won the league? And we are going to feature in a fair few stats. I will show the I'm going to showcase the possession. 54%. So again, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I'm not going to hide anything. It's not going to be that dominant when it comes to having the ball. It's more of a sort of a direct approach, in my opinion, in terms of hitting them on the counter-attack. The most shots for 790, which is really, really impressive. Getting up, well, it is over actually 200 more than Real Madrid. The most goals at 134, a ridiculous amount to be scoring in the Serie A. The Serie A? The Spanish League. Don't know where the Serie A come from. The most points per game at 2.58 obviously naturally going to be more than Real Madrid joint top with Madrid for the most clean sheets and when it comes to goals conceded obviously only three more than Real Madrid but still a very good treble winning season data hub wise this is where you're really going to see a spike in the tactic in terms of breaking past the two goals conceded I'm boosting it up a little bit. 3.3, 3.53 goals per game. 3.53, it's nearly a goal extra per game, going from sort of a middle table team to like a top four team. 0.76 when it comes to the conceded, getting on for 21 shots per game and 87.58% pass completion and attacker win ratio of 77.3. So just going from that 10th place to almost like a top four team is such a big difference. These stats are incredible. And lastly, it's got to be shown the powerhouse of the video for those of you that do play as a big team or have built up a very big team over a few, four or five years roughly. We are going to go over and actually win the quadruple with Manchester City being the Premier League, which we absolutely dominated, by the way. Arsenal coming in with 79 points, joint with Aston Villa. We had 104 points, so a very dominating Premier League season. The FA Cup against Blackburn, credit for Blackburn for getting to the finals. The Carabao Cup against Tottenham and that Super Cup against Sevilla as well. We scored 140 league goals, conceded just 21 and zero red cards. So this is what I mean. So this is the same tactic, the same intensity, but the better team you are, usually obviously going to be the better players, better decision making, better composure, not going to be as reckless with that tackle harder instruction on. So it's not bad having tackle harder on. You've got to make sure you haven't got absolute crazy players that are going to get, you know, no decision making, very ruthless, very aggressive, because it does. It, sometimes that is what causes you issues, not actually having the tackle harder on. Erling Haaland, 80 goals. We're going to take that any day of the week. 8.03 with a rating as well. Kyle Walker picking up 37 assists, which is absolutely incredible. Now that is across all competitions. And obviously with this tactic, I will say he's basically a winger. I'm going to throw it out there. When we see the highlights, he is literally a winger. Absolutely incredible. Edison with a 96% pass completion. And as I spoke about the points tally, no one was even on the same level as us. Team stat wise, possession wise, we are going to be up there. Of course, we are Man City. 57% of the ball. So those of you that are playing with real good players you can get this out of the tactics still we're gonna have the most points per game at 2.74 the most goals at 140 the fewest shots against at 162 the most shots at 935 the most dribbles made at 822 as well and obviously defensively we were so sound most clean sheets at 22 and also the fewest conceded coming in at 21 data hub wise we've even gone and improved on that madrid as well 3.68 goals per game which is absolutely crazy actually edging towards four now Conceded at 0.55, so way under a goal a game. 24.61 shots per game, an 87.67 pass completion, and attacker win ratio of 77 points. 9-3. So overall, what we're learning is it can perform with any single level of team. Now that is a tactic I'm happy to show. I will say, though, with this team, even in some of the bigger games of the season, like this one, the Carabao Cup against Tottenham Hotspur, it wasn't close games. I mean, we're talking a 4-0 cup final here against quite a good team, Spurs jokes aside. I mean, they are a decent team and get into the cup final, so they must have been doing something right, and we absolutely demolished them. And to be fair, we got off to such a good start, and that is Tottenham all over. I'm going to throw it out there. Awful defender and almost a gifted second goal. Great link-up play now, getting out wide into Kyle Walker, and you can see why he gets so many assists, because he's out there in so much space and look how confident he is running at this back line and I'm not being funny. He has literally got... He's, is he offside? He's just about onside, I think, Haaland. One, two, three easy options and even a couple more on the edge if needed. So he's always going to complete a pass. And as you can see... 
He's onside. He gets the goal. It's as simple as that. When you've got Erling Haaland at striker, anyone can get assists. And a player like Kyle Walker, who is naturally very gifted at putting a ball in a box, can definitely pick up assists. As we've got to see now, we've got Valio down the left-hand side, back into the middle, into Haaland. It's a replica. Over to the Atletico Madrid save, where we actually played Celta Vigo in the league in quite a comfortable... 7-0 win? Um, all the goals coming as well past the 32nd minute, so we didn't even get off to that lively of a start. A great set piece there, though, showcasing how good the set pieces are, as... That's not a highlight, by the way. It's not a copy and paste. That is two identical goals. These map set pieces are absolutely incredible. As we're going to build up again now, great play, utilising the space on the right-hand side. Malena outright, back into the middle. It would have been a pen... We'll take the goal instead. No complaints from me at all. But no, the set pieces which Nap has are absolutely incredible. So be sure to get them as well. Great bit of play from Koke into the middle. And you know what? The, the variety of goals you score with this tactic never fails to amaze me because they come from great pass and play. They come from a little bit of individual quality, come through the middle like we saw there. And the players aren't afraid to have shots at the goal. We saw that with the stat lines as well. These players even in the smaller teams, not the best players necessarily. They're not afraid. As you've got to see there, a great bit of confidence. Even the fullbacks, not afraid to shoot. Fantastic finish. A couple more goals or one more goal to come, I believe. Lorente got to play out wide into Aspel Equator, back in the middle, and what a finish. Lastly, a game against Werder Bremen. Again, the set pieces doing set piece things. Nap. Absolutely incredible for you again. Every time I feel myself saying that. Trimmel down the right-hand side, driving it back in the middle into Datro for Fana, who, by the way, had a fantastic season. But I believe he was actually, yeah, he was the top um, joint top goal scorer with Bonucci. Aronson, great play into Datro, and it's just short passing. Looks so beautiful, looks so great. And this next goal, I remember seeing this live. Watch this set piece. It's honestly something special. We get a little bit lucky with a deflection, as in getting the ball back. But this finish... Don't know why the goalkeeper dives so high, but we've got to take it because that is incredible and a little penalty to finish it off. Now over to your favourite part of the video. That is going to be the tactic breakdown. If you are enjoying so far, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. If you do enjoy the content I post on the channel as well, you can see my YouTube link in the description below. I post tactics, I post some rebuilds and a new series actually coming this week called Tactical Rebuilds, a mixture between tactics and rebuilds. So if anyone wants to come over, leave a little love heart, get in the festive spirit. It means the absolute world. But let's go over and talk about these player roles then. So, first off, is going to be the sweeper keeper, who is going to be on support on the default. What's the betting on tackle harder? It is going to be there. A wing back on attack on cross less often, sit narrower and also tackle harder. In the middle, a ball playing defender on defend, on dribble more and also tackle harder. And on the left hand side, it's going to be exactly the same. Now, I will say for any new viewers, there are going to be a lot of tackle harder instructions. Do not let it put you off. I will say if you are finding a certain area getting sent off all the time, maybe your players just I've got really bad sort of decision making. Maybe they're too aggressive. There's a lot of factors that can come into it here. So you can unselect it if you want to do so. Just a little heads up. And the wing back on the left is going to be on attack on cross less often, sit narrower, and also tackle harder. In the middle is going to be a DM on defend, on tackle harder, and mark tighter. On the right, a volante on attack, on move into channels, tackle harder, and mark tighter. And on the left hand side, it's going to be exactly the same. Going up to the top part of the Christmas tree, if you haven't seen already, it looks very much like a Christmas tree, hence the name of the tactic. An attacker midfield player on the left on attack, on tackle harder, and on the right hand side, another attacker midfield player, but a few more instructions. Take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, and also tackle harder. And up top, the advanced forward on attack, also on tackle harder. They're going to be your player roles to complete the lovely Christmas tree. Let's go over the team instructions. So, this is all based off a tiki taka style on the attacking, the attacking mentality. In possession, we're going to go with fairly wide, pass the ball into space, overlap left, overlap right, focus to play down the left and also the right-hand side, very wide dominated in this tactic, a shorter passing directness, a higher tempo, and also low crosses matched with that run at defence. So it is vital you have this selected on the right-hand side and the left-hand side because it's naturally quite a narrow system and having the overlap options really allow Kyle Walker to, not just Kyle Walker, but also the left-back, find loads of space and play out there and then drift the ball back inside, whether that be getting into the box and you know, squaring it for, for an easy tap-in 
in or just naturally drifted it inside to a central midfield player. So it's very crucial you have that on. In transition, it's going to be very meta-based. Counter press, counter, distribute quickly and distribute to the centre-backs while rolling it out. Now with this, you can take short goal kicks. It comes down to utter preference. If you've got a target forward, you could even go distribute to target forward. In my opinion, and I do like to dish in my opinions on this channel, I don't really think this is that deep necessarily. You can go longer if you wanted to do so in this system. There's a lot of players to pick up the scraps. And lastly, out of possession, the much higher defensive line, the high pressure line of engagement. Again, if you are conceding way too many goals, which I will say I did not find at all with this tactic, even with the smaller teams, we were scoring way too many goals to com to even care about conceding the odd goal here and there. But if you are caring about that, the, the least or the max I would do is drop it to a higher. I wouldn't go with standard. Keep it, if you can, at much higher. If not, higher would work as well. And to finish it off, much more often on that trigger press, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, get stuck in, and also step up more. That is going to complete today's tactic. It is going to be the green X nap, Xmas tactic. Nice to see nap getting in the festive season with a lovely Christmas tree formation. And to be honest, we thought it was relevant to put it on the channel just before Christmas. But hopefully, if you do celebrate it at home, have a great Christmas, and I'll see you boys in the next video. Have a great day.